Hey guys, and welcome back to another YouTube video. So in today's video, I'm going to be continuing with the sixth video in my Python programming series. And I'm just going to give you a quick sneak peek on what's going to be happening in this tutorial. Pretty much, we're just going to be creating an enemy on the screen, just like the description or the title says, uh, that's able to walk around like this. Now, I know this seems simple for something that's probably going to be about a 12 to 15 minute video. Uh, but this is more complicated than it looks and obviously we have the animation going so everything looks good and he's changing velocities as he hits each point so we, we're going to put him on a path and he's going to be able to move that path so that could be the path could be here could be here to here um, it's variable meaning it can change so that's what this tutorial is going to be uh, make sure you stick around to the end if you want to learn how to do this and since we're using images I just want to direct our attention to the github here quickly so if you haven't seen already, I have a GitHub for this uh, series where I post all the images and all the tutorial files. Uh, I started at three just because the first two were pretty basic. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, so what actually happens is you're going to get to this page. If you click on the link in the description, click on game, scroll all the way down to the bottom. These are all the tutorial files if you want to download them, uh, if you want to look at them for reference. And then all of the images are in here. So if you actually want to download these files, you click clone or download and click download zip file and it's going to download all of it onto your computer from there you're going to drag all of these images so like from the top here all the way down to r9e into your uh what do you call it into your game folder or directory wherever you have your python uh file stored and then you're going to be able to do this tutorial so make sure you do that um if you want to use these sprites if not, then you're just going to have to load your sprites in uh, by yourself. Hopefully you can figure that out. And pretty much what I've done is I've named, for example, we have 11 images for uh, our enemy moving left and moving right. So I've done like L10E, L11E, just meaning left, 11th image, enemy. Uh, all right, so that's the GitHub. If you guys haven't been there, go check it out if you need to. Uh, and yeah, whatever. Okay, so let's get right into the tutorial. So uh, our game here. Remember from last time, right now, oops, this is a different game that I'm showing. What am I doing that for? Um, uh, sorry. Okay, so we get into our tutorial here. You remember from last time, we have our little guy, jumps up and down, moves around the screen. Now we're going to create the enemy. So the first thing we need to do when we want to create the enemy is, oops, I've accidentally closed this game again, is we need to create a class so that we can then work out of that class. So I've already done this. I've done class and then enemy and it inherits from object. And then I've created two uh, class attributes here. Don't have to worry about what that means. Just write variables that look like this in your class. Now I've already loaded up all the images. So I have R1E, R2E, all the way up to R11E and L11E into their uh, names here. So walk right, walk left. And you just do that at the top of your class. And then after that, you can define your initialization function like so. Now you don't have to understand exactly how these class attributes work. Just write them in like this and we'll get to them later. So we're just going to create our initialization here. So we need X, Y width height. And then we're going to create another one here. That's new. It's going to be called end. And I'm going to go over that in a second. So do self dot X equals X self dot Y equals Y. Wow. I can't type. And we'll do self dot width equals width and so on until we finish all of the variables. And then we'll add our constants and we'll have self dot end equals end like that. So now we're going to add our self dot walk count. This is what's going to be responsible for counting our sprites and what image we're on. And then we need self dot val and that's going to be equal to we'll start with three. So now we need to create our draw function, our method, sorry. We're going to do uh, define draw inside here. We're going to take self in window. And then we're just going to write pass in here. So we're going to get back to that. And then we're going to create our no another method called move. And then here we're going to do self. And that's all we need, just self in there. All right, so I know I've just whizzed through that. It's just because uh, we've already done this a bunch of times. So I figured we can go fast through this part. What we're going to do here is we're going to create our enemy. Now our enemy is going to move on a set path. So like I showed you before, it moves from left to right and then left and then right. And pretty much it moves between two coordinate points. So ours is going to move in one dimension, meaning it's only going to move across the X axis. 
Now, if you wanted to move this up or down, you would just change the Y value rather than changing the X value. Okay. Um, whereas for us, since we're moving X, we're just going to be create adding to the X value or subtracting to the X value, depending on where our enemy is. So I want to run this program already. I have another file where it's already coded. Um, you can see once he gets to a coordinate point, so about where my mouse is, uh, he turns around, he changes directions. Now, to change directions, he needs to change velocities. So to do that, we're going to be multiplying the velocity by negative one and so on. And I'm going to get into that now. So this is going to be our move uh, method here. Now, what this move method is going to be responsible for is every time we try to draw the character, we're going to move, we're going to move the character. So we're going to do self dot move in here. So we don't forget every time we draw, we're going to first move and then we're going to draw the character. Now I just need to add another uh, variable up here. It's going to be called self dot path and it's going to equal self dot X and self dot end. Now this represents where we're starting and where we're ending. And these are just the X coordinates so that we can keep track of them uh, when I'm checking them down in the move method. So we go into the move method here and we're going to start by saying if our character has a velocity that's positive. So pretty much if self dot velocity is greater than zero, that means we are moving right. So we're going right. We're adding to the velocity. Then what do we have to do? Well, we have to check if he is about to move past the point that we want him to stop at. So we're going to do if self dot X is greater than, or actually we're going to check if it's less than so that we know if it's less than, and then self dot path. And since we're moving to the right, we know this coordinate is going to be uh, to the right of whatever, uh, what do you call it? Our character is moving at. If it is less than self dot path, and then from there, we just do one like this because we're accessing this element here. So I had a little uh, brain fart there. Minus self dot velocity or plus actually. So this way we can tell, sorry, I need to change this to over here plus self dot velocity so that we see that if we add to the velocity of this X coordinate here, if it's less than the coordinate that we can't go past, then we will allow our character to move. So then we'll do the self dot X plus equals self dot velocity like that. I hope that makes sense. Now, if we are already past this coordinate, so our X is greater than, or we are about to be greater than, then we need to change directions. So to change directions, like I mentioned before, we're just going to multiply our velocity by negative one. Uh, therefore flipping us 180 degrees and moving us in the opposite direction. Then we're, what we're going to do is we're going to set our walk count back down to zero like that. And that's all for that. Now we need to create our else statement because if our velocity is negative, so it's not greater than zero, then we need to check if our self dot X it minus the self dot velocity this time is greater than in this instance, what's going to be self dot path one like this or not one zero. Sorry. So this is exactly where we started from. We're moving negative. So we want to make sure that we don't go past that. If we're not moving past that again, we'll change our X to so self dot X plus equals self dot vel. Now you might think, well, we should probably be subtracting if we're moving left, but our velocity is going to be negative if we've changed directions, move left. So if you're adding a negative, you're really just subtracting that number. So that's fine. And then same thing in the else statement here. We're just going to copy exactly what we have here. Oops. Don't know why I deleted it uh, like that. So we have self dot val equals self dot val times negative one. Again, changing the directions to negatives, make a positive. We're going to be moving right again and self dot walk count equals zero. We can get rid of this pass. And that's all we need for our move method like that. All right. So now after we've done that, we're going to move back into our draw here. And this is where we're going to determine whether we're drawing an image to the left or whether we're drawing an image to the right and how the animation is going to work. Similar to what we've done in the player class up here, it's just going to be a little bit different. So if you remember in our player class, so actually let's go up here for a second. We have 27 as our maximum walk count. Now, once that walk count gets past 27, we reset it back down to zero. Um, so we can continue the animation. Now, since we have 11 images actually rather than nine in our enemy. So moving right or left, we need to change this slightly. So we're going to do 
if self dot walk count is less or plus one is less than or equal to 33 like this then we're going to just gonna do self dot walk count wow equals zero sorry my typing is absolutely horrible now if that's not the case or after we check that then again we're going to be checking to see whether we're moving left or right so rather than having like a self dot or having a self dot right variable a self dot left variable or attribute whatever um we want to just use the velocity because we know if our velocity is positive we're moving right if our velocity is negative we're moving left right so if our velocity is greater than zero that means we're moving right so if it's greater than zero we're all we're going to do is we're going to blit to the screen the images again right so wind up blit and then we want our image so we're going to do self and this is where these come in handy you just have to use self to access these all right so we're going to do self dot walk right because we're moving right and then in here square brackets and self dot walk count and then integer division three again because we want to make sure it's not looking like we're moving too fast then we need our coordinates so we'll do self dot x and self dot y and then we need to increment our walk count so we'll do walk count plus equals one like that now else so if we're not moving left we or if we're not moving right we must be moving left i'm just going to copy this and then we can edit it in here so we're just going to change this simply to left and i think that's all we need to do so now that we'll actually get rid of this pass here now that we've had the draw method we have the move method what we need to do is we need to create an instance of our enemy so right now if i show you if i run the program since we haven't created an instance we still he's not on the screen we don't see him he's not moving around um, we need to first create the instance of him so just like we created the man instance down here near our main loop we're gonna do the same thing i'm just gonna call this goblin and he is an instance of enemy he's gonna start at what x coordinate we'd like maybe 100 410 again and then we'll see 64 by 64 and where do we want him to end so what uh, x coordinate of the path do we want him to end at let's maybe do 450 and there we go we've created an instance of it, instance of him now that we've created that instance we need to draw him so goblin dot draw on the window and let's test this out we have an issue name vel is not defined ah error that i've ran into here we need to just put self dot vel here my bad and let's see if it works now walk count reference for assignment i always forget myself here don't i so just make sure you guys have yourselves here uh because i forgot them and everything looks good let's test it out there we go we see we have a little goblin man moving around but it doesn't look like uh everything's working properly right his feet aren't moving so what could the issue be here now i think the issue is something to do with our walk count whether we're not incrementing it properly or ah this is the issue less than needs to be changed to greater than what I've just added, fixed here is the fact that um, we were saying that if self dot walk count is plus one is less than 33, which it always is, um, then it's just going to set it to zero. So we wasn't changing the image ever. So what we needed to do there is we needed to set this to greater than so that uh, that's not happening. Sorry, guys, my mistake there. Let's run this. And there we go. We see our goblin running around the screen. And when he gets to the end coordinate, he changes direction. And you can see he has a nice little punching thing there. And so what we're going to do uh, with this in the next tutorial is we're going to be doing collision with our player. So if he hits the player, he's going to lose points. And then our player, he has these bullets, right, that he can shoot. If he hits the goblin, the goblin's either going to start flashing or he, the player's going to gain points. Uh, we can figure that out in the next tutorial. So sorry about that little issue there, guys. But if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. And I will see you again in the next one.